Jenricks. We're going to speak to Robert Jenricks, Tory leadership front runner, any second now. Let me just review this from Grumpy of Windsor. Morning, Mike. Talking about carbon capture plants, I'm on my way to work and must have driven past hundreds of them. Uh, they're called trees. Um, yeah, there is that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and, of course, this one from uh, Jan in Newcastle. Hi, Mike. As Starmer has a legal friend in the Mauritius issue, this should be a conflict of interest and he should never have been allowed to do it. Well, we're going to start our conversation with Robert Jenrick about that. Robert, very good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. I see you've written a piece in The Telegraph this morning uh, in which you call this deal a, uh, an act of self-harm. Uh, the Starmer government cares more for global elite opinion than British interest. A pretty staggeringly quick deal that was done, wasn't it? Yeah, I think just 10 days or so ago, the government said that they had no status update and now they're announcing this deal. I think this is an act of self-harm by the Labour government that is going to seriously damage the interests of the British people. And they are currying favour with an international diplomatic and legal elite at the expense of the long-term interests, not just of the United Kingdom, but the whole of the West. They signed a deal with an ally of China for an extremely strategically important territory that is sovereign territory of the United Kingdom. It's a bad deal and it reflects very poorly on the judgment of Sir Keir Starmer. And it suggests that other territories like the Falkland Islands and Gibraltar, and some people have even suggested Cyprus, might also now be considered a bit vulnerable. Well, I think it's hard to know what's next with this government. This is a deal that I wouldn't have signed, a Conservative government wouldn't have signed, and so who knows what Sir Keir Starmer will do next. Starmer and David Lammy always seem to put other people's interests first over those of the British people. They're more interested in currying favour with the international diplomatic elite than they are for standing up to our long-term interests. But this is a very important strategic territory in the Indian Ocean, and it's being handed now to an ally of China. China know exactly the importance of this, and the long-term interests are going to be undermined. Of course, we have a 99-year lease, which we are paying for, um, but we all saw what happened with yeah. Hong Kong. It means in the longer term still, mm. this territory will end up out of our hands, and that's very damaging for our interests. A lot of people in Labour, of course, say, well, hang on a minute, you know, it was James Cleverly who opened the negotiations on this whole deal, so perhaps you should question the Tories about why they started it. Well, look, I, I can't speak to that. I do know that David Cameron, when he was the Foreign Secretary, uh, cancelled the deal or didn't uh, take it forwards and that was the right decision because this is a bad deal for Britain's strategic interests and it compromises those of our allies like the United States. A Conservative government would not have signed up to this and certainly if I'm uh, lucky enough to lead the Conservative Party we will oppose it tooth and nail. I'm arguing for a vote in Parliament next week. There is an opportunity on Tuesday when there's an opposition day debate and I think we have to use that for the whole House of Commons to show our opposition to this. And if the Labour Party want to proceed with this bad deal, for them to come and vote in favour of that. I mean, there's a couple of signs that they're acting without, I would say, due care and attention, without due regard to, um, to standards and practices. I mean, they've got, you know, a res uh, they, they've got a recess going on. They come up with this particular decision. They rush it through before Parliament's even got a chance to talk about it. We've also today seen the story of 65 civil servants being appointed um, uh, through very, very unusual, shall we say, recruitment processes, not going through the usual channels, uh, to put sort of people in places where they want them to be, sometimes even people who have donated to the party. They seem to be kind of, you know, on a, uh, on a, on a kind of whirlwind of, of just getting away with whatever they want to get away with. Yeah, well, this, this is a chaotic government. It's three months in. For a government so fresh, it's already so stale. It's making serious mistakes and it has scant regard for Parliament. It's frankly shameful that a government would do something so serious as handing over sovereign British territory and do so when Parliament isn't in session, when there can be no proper scrutiny and accountability. You know, it's extremely rare what's just happened. You know, when was the last time that the United Kingdom government decided unilaterally to hand over territory to that of another country? You know, it needs to come to Parliament, it needs to be held to account, and I think this should be done via a vote. That's why I'm going to be calling 
for this vote on Tuesday, and I hope that will be the opportunity for the whole House of Commons to come together and express its deep dissatisfaction with this decision. So if David Cameron had already kind of kicked this uh, out of touch or into the long grass or, or just said he wasn't interested in doing it, why was James Cleverly suddenly uh, interested in reopening negotiations then? Well, I don't know. You'd, you'd have to ask him. All, all I can say is that this is not something that the Conservative Party would or should support. You know, we, we are in a generational conflict now with China. China is a strategic threat to the United Kingdom and that of our allies in the West. And we need to have strategic assets like this, an incredibly important military base in the Indian Ocean that can be used for the deployment of British, American and allied forces. To give it up is a big error, one that will be regretted, I think, for generations to come. Yes, we have this lease, but that's clearly a far less secure form than having this mm. as British sovereign territory. And even the lease itself only lasts for 99 years. Surely, as a country, we can look further beyond uh, into the future than that. We're going to be in a rivalry with China in an authoritarian regime for generations to come. It's incredibly short-sighted to give up this site. And we're also going to be paying quite a lot of money for it as well, which doesn't seem to make much sense. Um, I don't know whether you were able to see this earlier on today. We played it out, um, uh, some footage of a Houthi rebel drone ship uh, going into a British tanker in the Red Sea, I think this is, um, and blowing it up. Now, I haven't heard the government speaking about this this morning. Apparently this happened on Tuesday. Um, the footage has only just been made available to us. You, can, you can't hear them, but on the, on, the, on the sound on the clip, you can hear the rebels um, shouting Allah Akbar as the explosion goes off. I mean, it didn't sink the ship, but I mean, clearly things are getting pretty hairy in, uh, in that part of the world as well. Look, absolutely. And this is once again the malign activities of Iran harming those of our allies like Israel and those of our own interests like British flagged shipping. I've taken a very hard line on Iran for a long time. You know, we have to be wide eyed to the threat that they are posing to British interests in the Middle East and beyond. It's one of the reasons, for example, why I've called consistently for the prescribing of the IRGC, the terrorist organization at the heart of the Iranian regime, which is behind many of these activities. We mustn't be naive to Iran and we must stand behind our allies like Israel who are fighting them. Absolutely. Final question on Boris Johnson. He's on the front of the Telegraph today. The UK needs a referendum on the ECHR. Do we really want another referendum? Well, I think Boris is absolutely right to say that the ECHR is harming British interests. It's out of date and it needs to go. It, removing it, you know, creating our own British Bill of Rights is the only way in which we will end illegal migration for good, get foreign criminals and terrorists out of our country and restore sovereignty to the British people and Parliament. I don't think that needs to be done by a referendum. What I'm advocating is that we add it to the stable of Conservative policies, we seek a mandate for it at the next general election, and then we get on and do it. The British public don't want to wait years. They don't want to go to another referendum. They just want to end this problem once and for all. And if I'm fortunate enough to be elected leader of the Conservative Party, that's exactly what we're going to do. You're still the front runner. Are you pretty confident still? Yeah, we just had a good conference. It was great to meet thousands of party members there. I really enjoyed talking to people, doing lots and lots of events, debating ideas, like leaving the ECHR, but a lot else besides. Next week, we're going to go back to Parliament and there'll be two further votes of MPs. Uh, very confident in that and then look forward to the final stage of the contest. Robert Jenry, thank you very much indeed. Tory leadership front runner, uh, of course, there.